mayor and alderman meeting will come to an order. We'll first have a uh, prayer tonight by Pastor Shelter from Faith Lutheran Church, which will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to our country's flag, which will be led by Scout Troop 444 tonight. O oh God, spirit of life, spirit of love, spirit of community, this meeting is occurring because we want to do good for our community and for your kingdom. We ask your blessings on those called to lead our city of Farragut. Bless these, our leaders, and all of us as we remember that we are all ultimately servants, serving the common good of all. Grant us the wisdom and the courage to know and do what is right and good and true. May our leaders and all of us be guided by the spirit of community and the spirit of love. This we pray in the name of all that we hold sacred and holy, all that we hold good and right and true. May it be so. Amen. Okay, do we have any changes to the agenda as presented? None. Move to approve. Okay. Quorum uh, with the motion and a second. All in favor, vote by saying yes. 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 Let the record show that the motion to adopt tonight's agenda has been approved. Okay, the mayor's report. Uh, let's see here. Let me find that thing. Do you need it? I thought I had it. You want my copy? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, tonight I will be reading the Small Business Saturday Proclamation that will be observed on Saturday, November the 30th. Whereas the town of Farragut, Tennessee, celebrates our local small businesses and the contributions that they make to our local economy and the community. According to the United States Small Business Administration, there are currently 30.2 million small businesses in the United States. They represent 99.7 percent of all businesses with employees in the United States are responsible for 65.9 percent of the new jobs created from 2000 to 2017. Small businesses employ 47.5 percent of the employees in the private sector in the United States and 94 percent of the consumers in the United States value the contributions small businesses make in their community. 96% of consumers who plan to shop on Small Business Saturday said the day inspires them to go out to small business, independently owned retailers or restaurants they have not been to before and would not have otherwise tried. 92% of the companies planning on promotions on Small Business Saturday said that the day helps their business and stand out during the busy holiday shopping season. And 59% of the small business owners said that Small Business Saturday contributes, contributes excuse me, significantly to the, their holiday sales each year. The town of Farragut, Tennessee supports our local businesses that create jobs that boost our economy and preserve our communities and our advocacy groups, as well as the public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now, therefore, I, Ron Williams, Mayor of Farragut, Tennessee, do pro hereby proclaim November 30th, 2019 as Small Business Saturday. I urge the residents of our community and communities across the country to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year as well. Okay. See, it don't look like the vice mayor has anything to report tonight, so we'll move on to approval of minutes. Are there any changes to the posted October 24th minutes? No, sir. Has everyone had a chance to review these minutes? I have. Yes. Yes, sir. Move to approve. Okay. Second. Okay, on favor, vote by saying yes. 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 Let the record show that the October 24th, 2019 minutes will be recorded as official minutes of the October 24th. 2019 Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. 
Okay, business items tonight. We have five business items listed to review and consider on the agenda. We'll start off with the approval of requests for change order from PRI of East Tennessee, Inc. for contract 2019-17, Campbell Station Road improvements at Snyder Road. Uh, yes, this, this item is approval of request for change order from PRI. Uh, for additional work that was required for the Campbell Station Road improvements at Snyder Road. Uh, you'll recall we awarded the contract to PRI back in June for their low bid of $144,057.95. Uh, it's, it's an issue with virtually all very small projects like this uh, where there are a, a lot of things that come up that are really outside the scope just, just to try to make the project blend in with the existing features, uh, things were that had been really overlooked in the plans. Uh, the, the project, in order to make everything work, well, it's all in transition. Uh, uh, to make everything work, it required adjustments to three drainage structures and, and the pipes running to them, as well as additional paving and milling work. Uh, the project is complete now I, I feel like it's been very successful i'll defer to, to allison on this i think she's been uh, yes is it working allison it's awesome okay <laughs> I, I feel good then uh i get a smile on my face every time i go through the intersection <laughs> okay uh, that was worth it <laughs> so it was worth it uh all in all though we do have additional work that was required uh this is a request for that those additional services that were not already covered by the contract uh, staff recommends approval of change order number one contract 2019-07 for $28,112.35 I'll move for approval okay Mayor, uh, I have a few questions have a motion in a second we'll have discussion next I assume that these these charges are within the acceptable limits. You guys have looked over these, and they're fine. Yes, uh, percentage-wise, it's, uh, it's it's awful, but it's it's the nature of small projects. Yeah. They're yeah. very volatile as far as percentages go. Uh, and did we have an engineer that went out and confirmed the issues that they? Yes, we we had Cannon and Cannon come back out and uh, take some shots and confirm that that our. Uh, what we were seeing the, the best way to correct mm -hmm. the issues okay uh, a lot of it had to do with issues with uh, that, that came up with elevations of existing pipe that were underground um, it's hard to describe exactly but uh, if you have a shot on one end of a pipe and a shot on the other end you assume it's straight from one end to the other yeah well if it kind of has a big bow in it uh, you have to replace all that pipe okay. if you're going to put a road mm -hmm. over it what does CB stand for in the uh, catch basin? Catch basin. Thank you. And so I assume where we could, we replace the pipe, and now we have new pipe, and we don't have to worry about this particular pipe in our storm. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Check Good. that one off. Yes. There, there were also issues with the existing sidewalk in front of the the hotel out there that uh, we did not anticipate having to get into that sidewalk, but there was really no way to avoid it. Okay. So uh, that's, that was a pretty big chunk of this. I want to say... Uh, that, was six, that, that was the 6,000. Right. Uh, yeah, I've got a question. How, was, is it uncommon, or is it common, for Cannon Cannon to miss these elevation issues? I mean, that just seems that's pretty standard uh, for them to be able to... Have I was it. not particularly happy that it was not covered already covered in the plans, but I want to make sure that you understand that this is work that would have had to have been done, just because we're, everything about this project was tying to the existing features out there. Uh, yes, I would have liked to have had it included already, but uh, the prices that they've quoted us in their change order request are reasonable. Okay. Now I will also say they're they're was additional paving that was done just to correct an issue within the intersection. Uh, that was a call that I made because you could go up there and look at it. Uh, originally, the project uh, had milling and resurfacing just into Snyder Road, 
but uh, uh, once we got up there and looked at it, it was pretty well cracked and, and deteriorated, and there was a need to go ahead and mill that out and replace it. So we also expanded that. There were additional costs that were already covered as far as a, a, a line item within the project. All in all, the project is it, it remains under budget by about $60,000. So, Daryl, do you think that these expenses would have been incurred by anyone we awarded <clears throat> this project to? I think so, yes. Okay. I have nothing else. Okay. Okay, with a motion and a second, uh, a motion to approve and a second. Uh, all in favor, vote by saying yes. 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 Any no's? Okay. Let the record show that the request to approve the change order has passed. Next will be approval proposal from Civil Environmental Consultants, Inc. for engineering services to provide stormwater infrastructure assessment pilot project. Yes, in your packets was a proposal from uh, CEC, Civil and Environmental Consultants, Incorporated, uh, for engineering services to provide our stormwater infrastructure assessment. Uh, this is a pilot project. It's not a large project, but... Uh, uh, You'll recall earlier this year, back in February, the flooding that we that, that occurred, it pretty much exposed the problem that we had with three pipes within the town that had to be replaced. And uh, with, with all of that work that had to be done, pretty much on an emergency basis, uh, the board requested that we look, that, that we create a true stormwater infrastructure assessment. Uh, we ran an RFQ several weeks ago and received uh, uh, responses from, I want to say, about 13 or 14 engineering firms on this. And we selected civil and environmental consultants for, for their response. Uh, we've met with them. We've talked about the issues, the, the, uh, the difficulty in coming up with, really, with a fee for this type of work. It's not something that everybody does every day. Uh, we felt like it's better to do a pilot project, select a one large subdivision that has no number of inlets and pipes and, and a reasonable feel for when they were constructed and the condition that we would expect. But uh, to do this as a pilot project, and after that, they would be, they, as well as the staff, would be able to better assess what kind of fee we would expect to do the whole town. So uh, this is a proposal from CEC to do the pilot project to do Fox Run subdivision uh, with a fee of $39,070. Staff recommends approval with a... Uh, let me read this. Approval proposal from Civil and Environmental Consultants for Professional Services to develop the town's stormwater infrastructure assessment pilot project. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, discussion. Uh, Daryl, I've got one. Is uh, that That's pretty outstanding that we had that many people that were interested. We always have quite a few that respond on those. Really? Uh, we, we've run general RFQs in the past and uh, received 15, 16 oh, wow. responses. It makes fabulous reading at night. <laughs> uh, you, not me. <laughs> I have some questions. Um, just a few that I'm going to go through as I read this, the description of this. In task two, they're going to go through and um, rate the condition of the pipe at the various locations, I assume. Um, you have, I forget what they call the, the grates where the, it, it flows into the, on the streets. Right. They'll lift that up and then drop a, look down in there. They will look down. They will not climb down into it, but they okay. will observe. Uh, you can tell a lot from above. Well, that's what I'm going to ask is, is that, uh, I mean, obviously there could be stuff going on in the middle of the pipe, but if there is something, it's typically showing at the... Typically, if there are problems within the pipe, it's going to show up at on the, either end. Okay. 
if they feel there's a need, and especially if it's an older pipe, if they feel there's a need to, uh, from that observation, to run a camera through the pipe, they will. The uh, fact is we really don't want to do that on every pipe in the town, and there are, I, I would say, the vast majority of, of our stormwater pipes and structures are at a minimum depth. If they failed, it's not the end of the world. Our public works crew can go out there and replace the pipe okay. if it's four feet deep. Yeah. The ones that we had uh, earlier this year, well, we had one that was, uh, what was that, David? Wasn't that about 12, 15 feet deep? deep. And 14. In, in uh, uh, Sedgefield? Uh, that is not one that we really want to take on. It's a 60-inch pipe, yeah. 15 feet deep. Uh, it's like opening up the Grand Canyon when you have to replace it. Yeah. Uh, most of them are going to be in the 4-foot depth, 4- to 5-foot depth range, and a lot of times they're going to be just running parallel to the edge of pavement. That's not something That's to be not, too alarmed yeah. about. Uh, the ones that we're really the most concerned about are the ones, particularly if they have a, uh, a constant stream of water running through them, uh, particularly if it's a one entrance subdivision, uh, and particularly if it is really deep. Okay. What's really deep? In 12, 15 feet. Okay. Um, I notice here um, at the bottom of that task two, it's, you're, we're gonna, they're going to create an algorithm based on uh, the characteristics that we um, weight as the most critical. Um, it will it be, and have you guys, I don't know if you've given any thought to that, whether it's the fact that it's at a single entrance neighborhood and it's a deep pipe, which is going to, um, how are you going to? That's why I just mentioned that. It's, uh, that's exactly what the algorithm will be built on. Okay. And how we will weight that, uh, that's probably going to be several discussions we'll have with the consultant. All right, so um, going down to task three, and I assume that is for um, the Campbell Station Road pipes. We have video of those pipes? Uh, we have, well, they're going to run video on the uh, Campbell Station okay. at, the, at the interstate. Okay. Uh, if I remember that correctly, yes. And we also have uh, video of the town's uh, worst pipes that we know of. And we want an assessment of those. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're, not, we're not asking them to run a camera through them again. We want them to evaluate what we do have. Example of some of the worst pipes? Pardon me? Example of some of the worst pipes? Oh, there's one in uh, Fort West. Uh, I want to say, if, what is the first entrance? Longbow. Lawton. Is it Lawton or? Longbow. Longbow. Right at the bottom, right there. There are edges. two pipes under Longbow. I think one of them is, is in very poor shape. The other is pretty bad. Uh, they really, I think they're both going to have to be replaced uh, very soon. There's one in... Uh, Before you go on, how deep are those? Do you know? I don't remember. I want to say they're, they're good-sized pipes. David, do you remember? I don't remember the depth. I know there was two very large pipes, though, next That's to each other, correct? One of those, we're just glad there are two entrances to Fort West. There was the other one. I don't. They, I was there when they were looking at. Um, yeah, you were out there at. Uh, Farragut, uh, the one next to um, Concord Christian, the entrance. What's that neighborhood that they use um, to go? Into, um, no. No, uh, Concord Christian. Well, Concord Christian. Concord Baptist Church. Or, Concord, or uh, Bel Air? No, the other side. Oh, Farragut Crossing. Farragut Crossing. Hills. Farragut Crossing. Farragut Crossing is, is it called Farragut Crossing? Yes. Anyway, so there's pipes in there that we were looking at that are, there was a list of 13 pipes that were, um, the Public Works had found. It was included in our last list. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll get David to shoot it to you again. But um, there was that list that they're looking at. So it looks like we have uh, two weeks from whenever, from when this, if this is authorized tonight, possibly eight weeks from today, we might have some uh, results from them. It looks like that's what their schedule is. I would hope so. I mean, I don't want to rush them or anything, but uh, we do want to move it along. Okay. I was looking at that schedule, trying to come up with that myself, and I thought it was closer to three months. Well, it says here 
Um, Little, some of the things may be going on at the same time. Well, they said it'll initiate work within two weeks of our authorization, and then it says uh, final delivery is expected to be four to six weeks after field data collection has commenced. So I'm assuming two weeks from now, field data collection starts com commencing. <laughs> okay. So that's why I came up with eight weeks. So, okay. but you might be right. Hopefully within the next two to three months. Yes. So. That's all I had. Scott? I, I think it's a great idea to do a pilot. I agree. really I like exactly all the activities that are in this. Um, well, and Fox Run the, is a great because it builds out in, and it's yeah. built, built out in so many different phases. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's what, 10, 13 phases? Yeah, 13 or 14. But it's a single entrance yeah. subdivision. Yeah. I think it's a high risk, yeah. and that's a good sample. For the pilot so large number of houses yes. in a single yeah. entrance your worst scenario that's who we should pilot yep very well done i have no further questions okay. then let's see here we have a motion second we've had discussion all in favor vote by saying yes yes, yes. he knows let the record show that the proposal for the pilot project has been approved Next will be the approval of a contract for audiovisual equipment for the Farragut Community Center. Hi, all. <laughs> I'm good. So, um, working with uh, the PBA um, in the new community center, uh, we got together with uh, their recommended uh, AV contractor, put together a package to provide services for. Um, for the community center um, for audiovisual needs, and that's what you guys see before you. Um, I don't know how far, how deep you want me to go into the the weeds with this, um, but we did look at uh, providing, you know, the AV for the uh, assembly room. Uh, that's uh, projectors, um, all the um, uh, equipment that's going to drive that, the ability to connect multiple different devices uh, to that projector and the sound system, um, a PA system in case we have a meeting uh, in that room. You could hear people talking, put mics on them. Um, in the lobby area, um, those uh, we put some uh, devices, TVs, uh, with bright sign software so we can uh, put out some marketing messages um, very similar to the TV we have out front here. Um, the same type of bright sign unit and in walking into the main area of the parks um, and rec, I guess, uh, office area, and then a couple other TVs for uh, presentations in some of our classrooms. Uh, so that's what this is. I'm going to move to approve the contract with DFA Solutions for the audiovisual equipment and installation for the Farragut Community Center in the amount of $75,063.87. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, the uh, motion was a second. To any more discussion besides what Joe? Really quick. We're. Mm -hmm. uh, I see we've got we've covered the assembly hall and the lobby and the yep. classrooms. Right. Um, we're not doing anything in the gymnasium. Uh, no, we're not doing anything in the gymnasium. Okay. Gymnasium that will be addressed at a later time, okay. I believe. Um, that was. Um, I told David I'd throw this. That's when David the Hatchet Man smoke came in. <laughs> and just started cutting, cutting, cut, cutting. I like that, David. It's good. Extreme. But, uh, <laughs> that is something that we're going to look at as possible having a portable type of unit that you okay. could use there and other places, not just physically only in the gymnasium. Okay. So we'll, we'll look into that and see what kind of um, opportunities there are for purchasing that equipment at a later date, probably next year's budget. Okay. I got a question. Did Was there any equipment left pre from the previous uh, uh, not that we could reuse. There was equipment in there. Uh, a lot of the cabling um, and that kind of stuff wouldn't be certified. Any vendor that we would bring in there uh, wouldn't work on it or do any anything um, with it. They just wouldn't. They, they didn't trust what was in there. So. Okay. Uh, what about stage? Is was there anything there at the stage that there, was usable? There, there's nothing at the stage that we're going to continue to use. No, there's a bunch of uh, PA uh, equipment that was in there, and that's about it um, okay. for uh, projectors, um, the uh, you know high-end audio. There's nothing like that that's okay. in there. 
Scott. No questions. Questions. Okay, then uh, all in favor of vote by saying yes. 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 He knows. Let the record show that the proposal for the pilot or excuse me, let the record show that the contract for the audiovisual equipment has been approved. Next will be approval of resolution R2019-09, revised FY 2020 fee schedule. Yes, sir. This item is to revise to include the state litigation tax. The town of Farragut Municipal Court has the jurisdiction within the, within the town and other cases involving violations of the adopted codes and ordinances. Um, the state law mandates that the court collect a litigation tax on all cases that are litigated, and the state has determined for the purposes of imposing litigation tax that the case is litigated with the defendant found guilty, either a guilty plea or after a court hearing. So that tax is currently $13.75. After a case has been litigated, the municipal court judge assesses court costs and fines the defendant in the judgment of the guilty or liable is entered, to, entered into by the judge. Currently, the state litigation tax is paid by the town out of the court costs that are due from the defendant. Since the court costs should be used to offset the cost of maintaining and running the court, the state litigation tax should be collected from the defendant in addition to any court costs assessed by the judge. The motion is to approve resolution R-2019-09, the revised 2020 fee schedule. So moved. Second. All in favor, vote by saying yes. 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 Okay. I don't believe there was any discussion needed on that. Any no's? No. Let the record show that resolution R-2019-09 FY 2020 fee schedule has been approved. Next will be approval of appointment to the Farragut Tourism Visitor Advisory Committee. Yes, sir. Candace Viox has applied for the Tourism Committee and that appointment will expire in June of 2020. So the proposed, proposed motion is to appoint Candace Viox to the Tourism Visitor Advisory Committee expiring June of 2020. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? No. Just real quick, who oh. are we losing? Um, Do we know? Do we remember? Yeah, they've, I think they've been gone for she's a couple been, yeah. months. Yeah, she's been gone for a yeah. few months, three, four months, yeah. Yeah, we just hadn't got around to, uh, to do a replacement. Okay. Gilbreth. She's doing a restaurant, so... Okay. But I don't, I don't remember. You might be right. We lost a few people. Okay. Yeah, well, Candace will represent uh, the uh, dining uh, portion of the. Uh, okay. Uh, all in favor, vote by saying yes. 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 No's. Let the record show that the board has appointed Candace Fox to the Tourism Advisory Committee. Okay, tonight we have three ordinances to consider. Um, and we'll start with the two that are for second reading. The first will be Ordinance 1927-27, Ordinance to amend the Capital Investment Program State Street Aid Fund Budget of Fiscal Year 2019-2020 Budget, passed by Ordinance 19-22. Yes, sir. This ordinance, there's been no changes since the first reading, and the so the Capital Investment Program will increase by 65000 and the um, State Street Aid will increase... Actually, it technically doesn't increase. It goes from last fiscal year to this fiscal year. $637,000. $637, and so the proposed motion is to approve Ordinance 1927 on second and final reading. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? None. Okay. With the motion and second, I'll ask for a roll call vote, please. Meyer. Yes. Alderman Pinchock. Yes. Alderman Pavlin. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Let the record show the ordinance 1927 has passed on the second reading. Okay, next will be ordinance 19-28, ordinance to amend chapter 4 of the Farragut Municipal Code to permit the sale and distribution of alcohol beverages in the town-owned rental properties. Good evening, members of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. It is my pleasure to to present to you this ordinance on second reading. There have been no changes made since first reading. I'm going to move to approve ordinance 19-28 on second and final reading. I'll second. second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, with a motion and a second, I'll again ask for a roll call vote. Alderman Pinchock? Yes. Alderman Pavlin? Yes. Alderman Meyer? Yes. Mayor Williams? Yes. Let the record show ordinance 19-28 is passed on a second reading. Thank you, Trevor. 
Okay, now we have one for the first reading. This will be Ordinance 19-29, an ordinance to amend the Farragut Municipal Code, Chapter 105, Article 2, Section 105-20, Letter E and Letter F, con concerning the construction types and sprinkling, is that a word? Sprinkled. Is that a word? Size and story structures, okay. <laughs> I don't need to repeat that word either. I might have trouble with that one. Okay. Uh, spelling it and saying it. So. I like that better. Uh, this is a pretty simple ordinance. It really is just uh, includes language to correct an existing uh, error in the municipal code um, that relates specifically to uh, modifications that we've adopted in relation to building and fire codes uh, that are in excess of the minimum requirements in the International Building Code. Um, those modifications relate to buildings that are in excess of 7,000 square feet uh, and that <clears throat> also are more than two stories. Um, we found uh, that we have an error in the existing language um, and currently uh, in both uh, sections uh, 105, 20, E and F uh, it states that it, it's talking about not more than two stories is where uh, the uh, construction type requ uh, restrictions and the sprinklering uh, applies and it actually should be more than two stories, buildings that are more than two stories. Um, so it's pretty much the opposite of what it says right now. So um, this ordinance would correct uh, those errors in both sections E and F and the staff recommends approval on first reading. I'll move to approve ordinance 1929 on first reading. Second. Okay. I think Mark practiced the word sprinklering. Th Spling oh, yeah. Sprinklering. Oh. It oh, flowed a... smoothly from him. <laughs> I'm still not sure if it's spelled properly. but. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion concerning sprinkling? <laughs> and the pronunciation there. No. Okay, with a motion and a second, I'll now again ask for a roll call vote on the uh, first reading. Alderman Poplin. Yes. Alderman Meyer. Yes. Alderman Pinchock. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Let the record show that the ordinance 1029 has been passed on the first reading. 1929. Or excuse me, 1929 on the first reading. Okay, tonight we'll have town administrator's report. David, you might tell us about the reason we're missing Sue tonight. Uh, well, I was going to do that the next meeting because we'll have some hardware to show you. Okay. Oh. For, the, uh, for the next meeting. So we'll save that in suspense. Until the suspense. Yes, until the next, until next month. But we do have actually a lot of things going on in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, I know we will not have a second meeting in uh, November because of uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. But uh, next Tuesday night, I know there's a meeting with Knox County Schools, uh, Knox County and the town of Farragut at 6 o'clock at the high school. And uh, uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin's going to be uh, speaking there uh, for anyone interested in learning more about the community. So that's 6 o'clock at Farragut High School. Uh, also, we've got uh, the board. Uh, I know many of the board members will be going to the TML district meeting on December 5th at 10 o'clock in Morristown. So uh, just to make sure everybody knows we're, we're heading to that to learn more about what's going on in our, in our state of Tennessee this next year. Um, a lot of events happening right now. First is Shop Farragut uh, for the holiday season is going to be starting on Saturday before Thanksgiving, so Saturday, November 23rd through the end of the uh, year. So we look forward to seeing everybody Shop Farragut. I heard some uh, ads on the radio this, this afternoon on the way uh, on the way back from uh, Chamber Networking. So they're already out. Steve's doing a great job getting that promoted. We appreciate what the FBA does for us there. Um, light the park. We, ever, we all have our uh, our favorite events for the year. This happens to be mine. So Monday, November 25th. This is the Monday before Thanksgiving. We haven't done it before Thanksgiving before, but uh, 5:30 to 6:30, uh, we're going to be out at Founders Park. Uh, have cookies, vendors, uh, all sorts of different activities for kids. Uh, to, with the vendors that are out there, uh, there'll be singing. There'll be caroling. Um, There'll be Santa, there'll be Mrs. Claus and the elves. Everyone's going to be there that night. The kids can bring their uh, letters to Santa and uh, be a great event for everybody. So we really look forward to, uh, to having that. We're going to try to light the tree pretty close to 630 that night. Um, also, a couple of events going on right after that are, is our Day of Infamy here at Town Hall on Monday, December 2nd. Frank Galbraith always does a great job uh, talking about 
uh, uh, D-Day and, and everything that went on with that. So that's 6 p.m. on uh, Monday, December 2nd. And then finally, we have our Celebrate the Season on Thursday, December 5th, here at Town Hall from 5 to 7, where, uh, again, kids can uh, decorate cookies and they can get their picture taken with Santa. So Thursday, not Friday? It's Thursday, December 5th. Okay. At, uh, from 5 to 7 here at Town Hall. <coughs> and that's all I have to report. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, town Attorney is absent tonight, so we'll not ever report from him let's see sign ups did we have anyone sign up we did not none wow okay uh is there uh, any other items uh, by any other board member no? okay the uh, time is approximately 7 35 and uh p.m without objection the november 14th 2019 board of mayor and alderman meeting is now adjourned <laughs>